So, all right, so Matt, you're a comedian. You uh, famously brought Limestone Comedy Festival here to Bloomington, uh, brought in tons of big names, you brought in Pete Holmes, Tig Notaro, and you know, some of the best comedians touring mm -hmm. in the country at the time. Um, all true. And now you're uh, helping run the Combine. Talk, yeah. talk to me about what it's like taking a non-technical background like comedy and applying it to a field that, you know, in a technical field, like working with people here at Sprout Box? Well, I think that there's two, uh, two connections between the two, between doing a comedy festival and doing a tech conference. Uh, one is, you know, there's a very practical aspect of it, of event coordination and, you know, the kind of the boring stuff, you know. But there's also the exciting part of it. This, the second one is you're working with world-class talent that uh, they're, you know, they're in the rarefied air in what they do, uh, whether that's in the world of comedy or in the world of tech. And getting to work with those people, I find always inspiring, even if it's not in my field of comedy. Getting to work with someone like Jimmy Wales or uh, Rochelle Ritzenthaler from Gensler, like I'm going to learn things from them, even though tech is not my world. It's something I'm interested in, and so I jumped at the chance to be involved with uh, the combine and, and kind of dip my toes a little bit in the local tech scene. That's awesome. Was it intimidating at all for you to get involved with people that? Uh, were highly technical when you maybe didn't have that background? Oh, of course, yeah. Like, for the first couple of meetings, I had no idea what anybody was talking about. And I was like, is that an internet thing, I guess? Uh, you didn't say .com afterwards. I guess it's an internet thing. But, you know, the tech scene is so welcoming and, and so open to new ideas and innovation. And I, I find it to be incredibly welcoming. I'm still learning every day. Uh, but... Yeah, they're just good people, and you just have to admit, maybe I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's the beauty of it. Like, you know, learning new things and, and finding, out, uh, finding out what a router is. I'm kidding, I know what a router is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it was a little intimidating at first, but uh, that sort of intimidation is what attracts me to things, too. Because it means it's an opportunity to learn. That's awesome. So, uh, what advice would you have for someone who didn't have a technical background at all, doesn't know what a router is, uh, but, <laughs> but wants to get involved in the tech scene in Bloomington or in West Lafayette or in Terre Haute or in Indianapolis? Well, I think that uh, there's several things I would tell them. One is, if you have even the cursory uh, interest in it, which I think most of us do with the, our lives that we have, if you love your, your smartphone, and you love playing games on your smartphone, you're interested in tech, whether or not you know it. Because there's probably a guy down the street who's building the next great game that you're gonna be playing on your phone. So why not get involved in that community? You know, it's definitely, not only, you know, it's the future where everything is headed, but it's also, it's exciting, and it's, again, something local that is really, really cool, that you can be a part of. And you don't have to be an app designer, you don't have to be uh, a technical guru. You know, there's, uh, there's room for everybody, and you know, and like I'm a perfect example. Sometimes they just need someone to come in and kind of help out on the back end, and you get to be part of a community. It's it's almost like um, it's almost like volunteering for a great cause, and the cause is the future of your city's economic base and creative base because this is a huge pool of creativity. I mean, I guess I keep coming back to that. That's what attracts me to the tech community is people are doing super awesome things that I didn't even know existed. And most of them are artists, even if they don't think of themselves that way, um, they're artists. That's awesome. So uh, have there been examples of your past in working with comedians and other artists? Uh, has your experience there contributed to your success in running the Combine? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. I think, yeah, I think anytime you run a large event, um, you learn a lot. And uh, I'm bringing all that experience from running Limestone last year uh, to the Combine. And there's just certain, there's certain things in running a large event that you don't think of until you get on site. And you're like, oh, right, uh, chairs. We should have had chairs for people. Um, this is going to be very awkward. People will be standing for six hours. That's going to be weird. So all the little checklists and things like that. Um, and then, again, I think it's... Uh, it's, I think, you know, you, you, there's the practical aspect of, it, of that, of event coordination and running an event, but then there's also staying focused on the big picture and what this means to your community, not just the local community, but regional and statewide as well, uh, both with the comedy festival being the first uh, Midwest comedy festival of its type, um, and then 
with the combine being like the big dog, being like the tech conference that is really bringing in people like Jimmy Wales and also like kind of fun, you know, things like Little Bub and her dude, Mike Brodowski. And it's so it's not all just techie, techie, techie. It's just like painting the bigger picture of how this all combines to affect our daily lives. So really staying focused on that, um, what this means for your community and, uh, and yeah.